Guess who's back in the motherfucking house? That's hey. right. <laughs> it's lip service. Like, Yo, mouth. Don't it go like that or something? Uh, um, okay, you took it too far. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to use the part that was appropriate. But it's lip service. I'm Angela Yee. I'm Stephanie Santiago. I'm Gigi McGuire. I'm L'Oreal. And we got Nick Hawk. He's back again. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey. Let me tell you, I was catching up on Gigolo, by mm. the way. You know, just to kind of look at certain things from um, the research, right? It was actually very, very interesting. Certain things that I was noticing. And I know we're going to talk about your book in a second. But um, what did you notice? You guys are really great at identifying how to connect with women, like probably more than the average man. And I kept thinking, like, is this game or do they care for real? Or are they like, this is just a job? It's all the above. It's it's game. But yeah, num- number one, we got to make the client comfortable. And mm-hmm. that's uh, that's definitely a skill that we need to learn early on. If you fail at that, you got you got nowhere to go. Right. Because I feel like men like escorts for a different reason than women like them for. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say? Uh, a, a little bit. Um I, I think I don't know if men would admit to getting a, a woman for the same reasons most women get a, a man for. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think everybody has the same wants and desires at the end of the day, men or women. One of the most interesting things you did was you had sex with a woman who couldn't. Well, you didn't have sex with her because it was too painful for her. She had some. What was it called? Vov. I was trying to pronounce it. You don't remember either. What? She but she. Really it was so. She had something wrong where like it was too painful for her to have sex. Oh. So like sorry. ever? I'm or so just, sorry to hear that. Yeah. Is it like a certain <laughs> dick size or is she just... Nick, maybe you want to expand on like, this? Has that, like, <laughs> I don't... Man, that was like a quick shoot. I don't really remember that much about it. Yeah, it was... Uh, I think it was a, con- a, a condition. It didn't make that much sense to me. <laughs> but that, that, I'm sure that's not something that often happens. Like, was that the only time that ever happened? Well, it happens every time, but... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but this one yeah. no yeah we just uh we just had some uh solo play right yeah yeah we didn't we didn't we like didn't you, t- up, you up. tied her up yeah and you we did still, some, we still had some fun yeah you still had some fun can you imagine not being able to have sex because it's too painful but wait she couldn't so could she do anal like was that her normal Pro, i I mean, if she can't take it in her vagina... No, but it's like something wrong. Well, yeah, something like there's something... wrong with her vagina. But yeah. like but her like vagina is the... meant to expand. Yeah, yeah but I've heard of... Um, remember we had um, someone else... Um, remember when we had... Um, and it was too painful for her to have sex. What's his name? The guy who has a podcast. The Ralph Sutton? No, my favorite... Oh, Premium Pete. Yes. Remember he spoke about how um, he met a girl and she could only get fucked in the ass because she had yeah, some I remember condition that. Yeah, it was where her, mm-hmm. um, her, her vagina, vagina was real small. small like, right. Yeah, the, probably the same thing. Right. Yeah. That's, it, that's what it sounded like. That's why I was wondering... Yeah, I'm sure she, she could have anal. I don't think that affects the anus, too. That <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But, you know, there's... Man, I think it'd be... I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want to go there, but you know, <laughs> there's, 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 there's other, there. there's, go there. Go <laughs> there's other there. ways go you, you there. can get a woman go up. <laughs> Man, it, it'd almost works. be a relief in some ways, I, I think, to not, not have to have sex, worry about <laughs> the complications of sex and getting pregnant, and then, but uh, you're still with someone and still getting satisfied. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's definitely more ways to satisfy a woman than just having sex. But like, what about you know, like men? Man? I feel like men have to have sex but women I, th- I think would be all right without it if they were satisfied in the in the appropriate but then what man could you have that wouldn't you know what i'm saying yeah like no man wouldn't get tired of fucking in the ass all well anal right I, I, I guess and I, it's more I, i'd hope it's you know more than that in most relationships anyways where it's it's a emotional yes. connection and, I and more every, everybody's got to get off you know and, and how <laughs> they get off you know there's there's different ways to do that <laughs> No, I understand. I understand. I mean, I per- me personally, I don't think I would be satisfied without, you know, having actual Vaginal sexual. Yes. But if it was too painful, you would have to. Right. That's what I'm saying. But what he's saying is right. There's other ways. Like, I can come without anything going inside of me. You know what I mean? So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, girls can come just yeah, by so, grinding and, right, and like, you know, so. other foreplay. Yeah. Oh, you could always be a lesbian, too. All right. That's true. But lesbians do they they insert They don't have to. They don't have to, but they, they can fist do each just, other they can and probably shit. Take fingers just not a dick cuz the fingers are small so that probably don't hurt. 
Like you, Stop doing that because your long nails is making me hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it you that and was they're on all the show? sparkly? No. <laughs> Galactic nails. <laughs> <laughs> to the moon and beyond. <laughs> now, you have this book out, 100 Kicks in the Ass, right? A Guide to Gaining Confidence and Reaching Your Full Potential. Yes. So I was going to say, let me ask you this. What's the reason that you've ever had to cut somebody off, like, in your life? For what? Just, I mean, like, what's the reason to be like, that person is toxic to me, I can't fuck with them anymore? I cut a lot of people off in life. I don't, I don't let anybody drag me down anymore. I don't care if it's family members. I don't care how long I've, I've known the person. Yeah. The, yeah. Somebody should not be in your life just because they're a family member. End of story. I don't, I don't care how much shit you've went through, how much they've, they've done for you. If they're, they're toxic to you, if they don't support you, if, if they, you know, abuse alcohol or drugs and then, and they, and they weigh you down and they don't give you the, the guidance and support that, that you need, they should not be in your life. That's but but you've reason. had issues too, so I'm sure that you know people have given you other chances, like second chances, third chances. You know, you got to be a little bit like the book. No, me. it's I. No, you don't have to immediately cut someone off. Mm-hmm. Obviously, approach them in an intelligent manner, have a conversation with them. This, I, I'm not liking this. I'm, I'm you're, you're being too negative. You're, you're weighing me down. I don't like it. You know, we don't we don't have to see eye to eye on everything, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, I don't like I don't like the, the way you, you you approach me. I don't like I don't like your your attitude. Or if it's usually drugs, drug and alcohol problems. That's the main reason why I cut people off. Mm. People who you know, at least family can't members. keep their shit together and they're incompetent <laughs> because of that. What about you, ladies? Cutting somebody off? Like the last time you cut somebody off, what was the reason? Um, dang, I've cut people off for numerous problems: betrayal, lying, stealing. You know, lying is stealing. a good. I think lying. Yeah. Somebody stole from you? That's fucked up. Yep. Like, like stole what? Your man or your money? Money. money. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She When I said man, she was like, no. What? <laughs> but how, you know what? It's hard to accuse somebody of stealing money because how can you really prove it sometimes? When somebody, okay, let me paint a scenario. Because you know, sometimes it's no, hard. No, you let like, me paint a scenario. You have someone go pick up money for you mm-hmm. for an important reason that you need it for. And they pick up the num- the money and spend it on what they want to spend it on, and never give you the money. Whoa! Ever. Well, that's a <laughs> that's stealing. Yeah, that's definitely stealing. That's beyond stealing. That's because you. That's bold. Mm-hmm. Well, it happened. They knew you needed that's another the money. level. And yeah. The whole thing with you know second chances and forgiving people. Um, I, I'm not a, a fan of forgiving somebody. I, mm-hmm. We we never forgive someone. When someone wrongs you, we we don't forgive them, even if we say that or that the, accept their apology or they, the, however sorry they are. We never we never fully restore that that trust that amount of trust that we had in somebody. So once you know someone wrongs you, steals from you, or something like that, you know they're they're cut down, and you can keep cutting them down more and more and more. You can recover a little bit. You're never going to get all the way back to up to where you were. You're not going to have that, that full trust if you do something horrible like that. Mm-hmm. You know, we're desperate mm-hmm. at times. We, we make mistakes and you can, you can recover from that shit. But if someone keeps going down and down and down, there's a point where you, you need to cut them off for good. What about in a relationship? If somebody cheats on you and then you forgive them, say, don't you think sometimes it could make your relationship stronger? Well, we, we shouldn't have committed relationships in that way to begin with. You don't think we should have committed relationships no, at all? No, I don't. I don't. My, uh, my, Stephanie. my philosophy on, on dating is, um, he sounds like every man before he even finishes. <laughs> um, I, I feel that we should, we should, everybody should, the most intelligent way to approach a relationship is, is in an open manner, not, not a wide open manner and in a trustfully open manner. I don't think it's healthy to be completely tied down to somebody without any boundaries to ex- explore. And Mm-hmm. If you're with somebody and, and you trust them and you have this this commitment, some type of open, you know, restraint, I, I think it's best not to hear about what goes on mm. outside of that. I do. That's something else that we, we can touch on. But you should have freedoms to explore out because most of the time when you go out and explore and you, you have fun, you fuck around with somebody, you realize what you got back at home. Right. And that shouldn't fuck up everything. And when you make that commitment, say, I'm never going to sleep around and I, I will never betray you. I'll, I'll never be with another woman. You know, it, it's a lie. You know, you know, it's just like, just like marriage. I, I don't support marriage either. It's, it's, it's not a real commitment. You don't know who you're going to be tomorrow, much less weeks because from now, Stephanie much less years horrified. from now, much less who they're going to be. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like the foundation of that. What, what's that built and having everything based on just one, one time. Like like one like one one promise. You you can't promise somebody forever. And uh, why not? 
you like, like you don't know who you're going to be tomorrow. You, you really don't. No, you like, can say so right now, right now, right is- now, right now. I love you. I, I plan on. I, 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 it's great to be in a relationship that's that's committed and grow with somebody forever. But you can't promise somebody for, forever. You don't know who you're going to be. You. I hope. I hope that we stay together. We can reminisce. We can have all this great time. We can time. reminisce. And we can, yeah, yeah. That's what you do. That's that's a good thing with being in a long term relationship. <laughs> you can look back on things that you've done and re-explore those things and grow. But people grow apart. And it and it's it, it's okay. No, no, to no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Sometimes. Okay, can I go? Can go I step, go? Go step. Is it my turn? I you know, I feel like to each to his or her own opinion all the time, you know what I mean? But I think that you can find someone and you can continually grow with them. Is continually a word? Yes, it is. It is? Okay, I just wanted to make continuously. Yeah. It's both both are words. Okay. 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 So you're okay. Still, she's continuing. You know, but you guys know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Get it. All right, you know, I think you can continue. <laughs> continue. <laughs> I think you could, you know, grow with somebody forever. I feel like it, you you can you can change it. You are going to that's change. What we want. That's just what we, like that's what, what we I said. For. Yeah, that's you know, what we definitely just, just want. like you know, change. You change every day. Yesterday, I might have felt some way about something that I feel totally different about today. Mm-hmm. But I feel like you can find that love where you can grow together. That's that's that, that's what we hope for. That's 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 but what we want. That but if you marriage if you marry somebody, you promise them forever. You commit to them forever, and something happens like they do in over ninety percent of cases now. Yeah, but then when then, something then then it's then it's then it's it's a lie because you promised them forever. You should never promise no, somebody but you forever know what? because then if, if it happens and you do grow apart, like over 90% of relationships do now, then it's, it's okay. And you guys can stay friends and it's not, no, you're leaving me. You lied to me. And then there's this hostile. This is what energy. I always say. This is what I always say about um, relationships. Like people are so focused on cheating, you know, people betraying each other with other people, you know, in a relationship. But I always say there's so many other things that could be a problem problem and this is a problem growing apart you know what i mean and i just feel like you know yeah people grow apart for sure but in relationships when something happens when there's some when something happens somebody did something wrong something happened in the a lot family of times financial reasons financial reasons people i mean it doesn't happen every day it might not happen with me it might not happen with you it might happen with all of us who knows but people can work on those problems and stay together mm. and grow together and you For know sure. and and not live happily ever after but live the problem and love is, the problem with is that one Nick person is probably too popping right now but maybe when you're like 70 years old <laughs> right listen i'm not gonna lie i always say this my ex-boyfriend's mom told me that men settle down when they get too old and lazy to run around anymore and they just settled in i'm down for a committed relationship i'm open to having someone continually in 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 my personal life i just i think it's a mistake to promise somebody forever Mm -hmm. i I don't think it's something that we can honestly do because we don't know who we're going to be in the future and i think it's a a mistake to commit to somebody and tell them i'm never going to sleep with somebody ever again and then if you do once in both of those situations if you (laughs) do and it usually happens usually if you're with someone for 10 20 years usually someone's gonna gonna fuck up and it shouldn't be that big of a deal once once again when you go out and explore and, and you do fuck up you realize what you have at home but and then when you do that shouldn't ruin everything right i don't feel like commitment. it should be that and sometimes it doesn't agree. i'm confused as to what you think a committed relationship is because with your occupation you do things so would you stop doing things if you were in a stop being a gigolo yeah. No, I don't plan on stop doing that ever. So, um, ever. I think <laughs> ever. I would, I, would, I would commit to somebody in my personal life, and she would be the only one that I'd be with in my personal life. And I think that's that, but that work is working. I don't feel like person. that's fair. No, but I, <laughs> but if somebody <laughs> met you and that's what you were doing, and he's I being would, honest, I would, I would never, I would never be with somebody and tell her. I would, I don't want to, I, I if I was with somebody I tell I don't want you sleeping around with a lot of dudes. If if it happened, I don't want to know about it. That's that's what I would tell her. If you if I'm not. Fulfilling you if you're not you're not happy. Just be honest with me, and, and you, you know. Please, I think that you can find a woman who will only sleep with you and be okay with your job. It has it hasn't been a problem. Exactly, right. I think you can find because that. I, I am open and, and honest about that shit. Yeah, too, so you know, that, you know I, I why not get married? Yeah, you seen the show? Google me. Why not get married? Well, marriage is based on something I don't agree with. I don't, okay, I don't really whatever. To, <laughs> I think marriage forever. is beautiful. <laughs> I, I like. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a romantic. I'm 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a hopeless, not a hopeless romantic, but a romantic a little bit, and I like a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> a <laughs> little bit. <laughs> now you one, one weekend here and there, you know, a couple you know times a year. <laughs> enough of it, like I said. He's a romantic. 
<laughs> I don't I don't know anymore. What is what is romantic to me? I, I kinda I wasn't I wasn't really thick when romance I said that. Romance is caring. Um, romance romantic? is the little things. I feel like if I because romance is kind of a lost just, art. Just hitting it off with somebody and not worrying about anything else that's going on and just being in the moment in time with them and enjoying that that night and weekend and and this has happened with with clients as well where I lose myself with them we just have this great connection and everything's Aww. flowing great but uh and yeah how much do looks matter when you have a client like can you be attracted to somebody but not be attracted to how they look physically you can be more attractive to someone than than others. I I prefer a fit woman. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't I don't mind being with uh, an overweight woman. They just they just need to take care of themselves. You know, hygiene. Smelling Isn't good. It? Smelling yeah, good. They, they, they There's a lot of pussy sure. eating on that show, and I always wondered, does it ever happen like with somebody hygienically is like a little bit of a turn off? Yeah, for sure. For I mean, that's sure? that's the it's it's a it's a common thing with women. I, I wish not not with. Uh, <laughs> Not with, yeah, well, this is something I found out when I was a stripper. So hold on one second. But this is with with my well, and and when women have their period after their period, they don't it's always smell a, awesome yeah. down there. Yeah. That's you know, it, it is a common thing. It happens once a month to mm-hmm. just about every woman. But uh, no, most most of my clients take take very good care of themselves. But now, when I used to strip and do bachelorette parties. I, uh, we, we, the, you know, they place dollar bills all over and put it in the pants and everything. And I'd go down in the pants and grab the dollar bill out of the pants. And I was just dumbfounded Woo! on how many girls I, I, that smelled bad down there. It blew me away how often that happened. Ugh. Literally. What? It literally, yeah. <laughs> that smell blew me away. Yes. Whoa. And no, that's yeah. not good. And a lot of women out there don't know that. Like, there, there shouldn't be any, unless it's Stench. right after your period, there shouldn't be any smell down there at all. You need to take care of yourself. You need to talk to your, yes. your, your, your so doctor, your gynecologist. You need to get there. Well, yeah. To change your diet. You know, have you ever told somebody? You don't do. She yes. You have. Oh I have. God. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I've, I've told a few said. clients. Yeah, how do you say it? How do you say it? Yeah, how do you say it? Tell L'Oreal right now. Now play. Don't even play that. Tell K Michelle right now. I'm not letting. I'm not letting up. Emails best with very carefully worded words to you know make them not feel horrible about them. Yeah, to make them not feel horrible about themselves. Oh shit. But what if you're about to go down there and it happens? Do you tell them like, "Here's a wet wipe" or "Go take a"? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do that on the spot. No. So you just still go in? No. Oh. But odor. <laughs> when you're talking about these He's kind of no. odors, you're not talking about like a musty odor. You're talking about an odor from the inside, like an unhealthy one. Not like a, I was out all day like and I had yeah. stripping. Yeah, no, like, like yes. bad fish. Like yeah. yeah. Oh, fish oh my god. Yeah. No, but you I, know what? I can't believe how many girls I pulled that dollar out of their pants. Smelled. I couldn't. I didn't think that was Ooh, a common no, speaking, thing at getting all. Getting back to that, I, so I just, many, so is, many. You uh. have to like, ladies, if you're gonna go to a bachelorette party and there's gonna be strippers, like they really, you know, be yeah, on your body. You down, like take a bath. Out. Jesus. I don't, I don't get it. I think I think one of the biggest mistakes <laughs> is you can over. I mean, it's it's a, it's a bacterial system down there. It's it's its own system, and you, you can't fuck with it too much. And, they said and douche is not good for you. No, can do that. Sex, is no good. sex can fuck you up real bad too. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, right. you know, so that's that's something women need to know as well. And and some women douche and clean too well down there. It's it's its and own environment, yeah, and, and, and it takes care of itself. Yeast infection, you, you yeah, end don't up fuck BV, with it too much. Like, but if if it smells bad, you have a yeast infection. Yeah, you got to get that cleaned up. You got to have that taken care of. Now, what if somebody hired you and they had a yeast infection? and they didn't say anything about it and then now what what do you mean if like, i had sex with them and they had a yeast no no let's just say you come they... in there and you're like oh shit there's like cottage cheese or something Ugh. like oh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> do you just leave like what happens if if that happened <laughs> what i i i i'd address that i you'd, you'd have to address that you know a like little a- a little unpleasantness down there isn't in the like, world. If it smells bad, nothing's going to hey, happen. Hey, bake that but bread, baby. Cheese, you got to probably fucking say something about that, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go there. It doesn't happen. I don't I don't think it's good. I hope oh, it doesn't. But I, there, I would address that situation. Has I'm, there ever been a, t- a time that you couldn't get an erection? Not when, not when I wanted to, and and I I used to I used to take pills. I, I don't take mm-hmm. pills anymore. I don't put anything unnatural in my body anymore. Um. And you, when I used to f- uh, struggle with some of these fears and anxieties in, in the beginning, um, if I didn't have a pill and I was in some type of situations, 
you know, there's, there's a lot going on though. You know, I've, I've as my book says, I, I had horrible anxiety and confidence mm-hmm. issues when I was a child. I was scared to speak up in front of my family at the dinner table. And you I, said I you faked attacks. a heart attack or something. I, I faked it. That was, that was in school. Yes. <laughs> I was scared William. to death to get called on. <laughs> I was scared to death to get called on in class to answer a question or or, or something like that because I'd freak out and I'd panic and I would have to come up with shit and I faked a fucking heart attack when I I was a kid and fell on the floor like I was having a heart attack. It just came to me. You were an actor from a young age. I spent more energy getting myself out of that situation than it's just so pointless to have this fear. We do these ridiculous things and it's senseless and Mm -hmm. I talk a lot about that Mm -hmm. in the book. And uh, so I, I had a lot of these fears and anxieties that I was getting over when I started gigoloing a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, if I allowed that fear and anxiety to, to take over, because we have this, you know, the the fight or flight or flight response to, and that happens when you put yourself in a situation that you're not comfortable in. And when that happens with men too, we withdraw blood from certain areas. So it even makes it harder to get it maintain, oh, wow. get or maintain mm. an erection. Ooh. It's like I had this issue. I talk about this in the book too, how ridiculous it was. I was, I was nervous about dick size in the locker room, as all kids are in high school and whatever. I was in wrestling and football, and I was nervous about my dick size, and that caused your it causes your dick to go in and the blood to come in. Right. So it, the it, dick it, was it's, nervous it's, too. It's, the it's, dick it's, was it's like, like no, a no, metaphor, no. a whole <laughs> lesson in itself, right there. How stupid it is to be right. to have this anxiety and fear at any any point in time. And that's crazy because guys really do compare dick size. Like, let's be clear. But like, how do we do this? Like, do y'all just like line up? Like, all right, everybody. Dick no, out. they don't do it on like like that. They just like kind of look. Tuesday but they look. The same way girls look at asses and stuff. Be looking at asses. I don't be comparing asses. Girls look at. Asses. I look like. Well, I can say right up. now I got the smallest ass in the room. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're half Asian, so you got to. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh but like, hey, it is what it is. That means I also got the tightest pussy in the room. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right now, and yeah, it's it's pussy. Pussy. don't get racist, okay? That's what they say. Asians have. They say. So wait, Nick, is there like a racial makeup to the pussy? Like, would you say that like different races have a different feel? Like, could you fuck a girl and know what race she is if you couldn't see her? <laughs> yeah, man, blindfolded. that's that's a good question. Blindfold it. <laughs> No man, I've, not not every, every <laughs> pussy is different, and I, I that's that's something I actually I, I want to look into a little bit. Let's I'm do a curious, test. I'm curious if certain races have certain pussies. I don't think so. I think because I've. Have been with been a with wide variety. Oh my God, here we I've been with mostly white, white, mostly white women. Mostly. What about Asian? I've yeah, yeah. I've, 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 I've been I've been with just about every race, so but mostly Gloria white women. Was- but I've seen the the variance between. <laughs> It's you wouldn't have no idea if you just cut that out of a picture or something. <laughs> they're they're small to big, no matter what what race you are, what what size you are. They right. vary so much. Uh, everything. Mm-hmm. There's no two pussies are the same. There's no It's not even close. Yeah. There's no place. That's Six the name. Pussies, <laughs> no. No, no two, two pussies, pussies are, are the, the same. same. Mm-hmm. That's great. You lady are special. <laughs> right. Your pussy is like nobody you else's pussy. pussy. It's a snowflake. Have you ever seen an ugly pussy? Come on, of course. Yeah, there's, 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 there's pussy some beat up course. ones. Beat know. up? How does the beat up pussy look? Yeah, too much meat hanging and shit. Oh, that, God. That happens. Not, not often. Uh, but, uh, too many uh, curtains. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Roast, roast beef. Eye the yolk. <laughs> the roast beef. Too With many mayo. I've seen, seen too much of that. Oh, oh, my God. Do you love squirting? Like when women squirt? Or is it I like... I love it. Um... It's 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 a turn on. It's 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 a turn on for me a little bit. Um, it's it's messy though, man. The, the mm-hmm. squirters I've been with, it's a lot. Like you gotta throw the mattress out after. Exactly. Like, Come on. Yeah, you gotta put a fucking tarp down. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I don't know where all this. I've been with a few of them. And I don't know where all the fucking liquid comes from. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm ready for it to pass oh, out or turn right. white or float away. <laughs> Shrivel up. And it just keeps coming and coming and coming. It's, it's like It'll that. turn into dust. It's, no. Is it the gut? squirt? I never have. Stephanie does I it do. the most. I've done it before. But I don't, I don't do it time. all the time. I have done it a lot. I'm telling you, it ruins. It's a, it's a mess. But remember, it's we a, had a mess. Lot, right? You can. They have a little mat for that, right? Guys the, love it. We're mat. mat. Oh, yeah. Wee wee pad. We have a wee wee pad. We put pet 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 I never <laughs> even seen that. Oh, it's pet 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 pet. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> no, because and guys like it. I don't understand. It's a mess. And then I gotta sleep in a puddle. I like. I like. 
turning I'm on the women. one sleeping in the puddle. Me <laughs> turning on a woman turns me on more than, than anything else. If it's moaning or, or gestures or orgasming or squirting, I know that she's really turned on. So that... That's yeah, what I feel like. I feel like guys like it so much because they feel like they did something. Like, they did oh do something my god, look what I, I made her that. do! Right, I did. <laughs> yeah, that. that's, that's part of it. <laughs> right, that's part of it. Well, God, let me I'm, moan. I'm, 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 I'm selfish. <laughs> I'm not that selfish. But. Now, you also said in your book, sixty percent of adults can't go ten minutes without lying. That's a study, right? Yeah. So that means somebody in here lied. I, I, th- I think it's it's much higher than that. It's one person. I think sixty <laughs> percent of adults can't go ten minutes without lying. I think that's crazy. 60. Well, there's there's different the, the lying's perception, mm-hmm. and and just because you're you're not Tell telling the, the full, t- it's it's sometimes that, you're being too what nice. What I talked about in there was people not operating at their full potential, and, who have done this whole self discovery thing, and they mm-hmm. know, and they're they're acting who they should be. And the person you should be is a person is a genuine person who you're most confident as, and that's the person you should be. So I think a lot of people. They're 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 selling themselves short and, and they're lying. And they don't even know it because they haven't found who they are. So it's a, it's a little deeper than just right. You know, what do you find about. yourself like? Because I'm sure you discovered a lot about yourself as you were writing this as well, right? So much, so much. For, so for what, start, sitting in that interview chair for Gigolos, we get interviewed every Friday. They ask me just about every question they could ever think of and every interpretation of that. I learned so much in that chair, and I knew writing this book that I was gonna you know even take that even further. So that motivated me. Me to, to write the book as well. Yeah, you learn so much because, you know, you want to, this this is in print forever. This is part of my mm-hmm. legacy and this is kind of my Bible and I want to help a lot of people with this and I want to have the right information in there. So I did a lot of digging, a lot of soul searching and a lot of research to do it. But yeah, what did you ahead. find that you were lying about? Like when you had to go through this and like what were some things that you felt like you weren't completely honest? And sometimes we lie to spare other people's feelings, you know, like you said, and Living in your truth is really the best thing to do. But what do you find that... Spare people's feelings. That's that's funny that, that you say that a little bit. And that's that's a few things that I hit, I hit on a lot. Mm-hmm. I think we're, we're a very weak society, a very babying society. Um, we, we let shit fly that we shouldn't. Too many of us operate at, at low levels and, and allow other people to bring us down. And we, we pat them on the fucking back and rub their, rub their head and tell them, no, you need to, you need to get your shit together. You're, you're better than this. You need, you need to pull it together and stop bringing everybody else down. Um, you find that your job as a gigolo is kind of to lie to your clients sometimes too, though, to make them feel good. Like if somebody I, comes in, I can't in do it. I can't do it. I'm, I'm not that guy. And in some, and, and I used to do it too, just like fish for compliments to, to think that this is what they needed. I actually, I have one of the kicks in the book is, is it talks about the compliments and how unnecessary they are. I don't, I don't like to be complimented. I wish we had more of a mentality. Like I feel like when I, someone compliments me, it's almost them suggesting that they thought I needed the compliment. What if they just meant it? Yeah. I don't. I don't think they're necessary. I, we we have we have a horrible outlook on this. When when we look good, when we feel good. So if we're not feeling good, you shouldn't compliment somebody when they're not when they're not feeling good, when they're not on point, when they're not taking care of themselves. But sometimes we think we look like shit, right? And other people think and people that people like, we look amazing, like, and people like how you look. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we have on our sweats, no makeup, hair in a ponytail. Yeah, you're probably well rested and 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 feeling good. That's that's feeling good. Mm-hmm. And, that, and you, you talk you about that too, how that. important sleep is. It's crucial. The key. I, less than 1% of 1% of us get enough sleep. We, I know. We, I love I sleep so much. And I love I it definitely too. If, get we're, enough. if we're operating at our full potential, which very few people do, you know, I th- I, we need 9 to 10 hours of sleep every night. I would love Jesus to. Jesus Christ. No, that's a lot. We do. That's a whole lot. I sleep about four, I've, I've, I've I've read, four uh, hours a night. The newest study suggests that uh, they, they did a study with people and they said... Uh, Seven and a half hours plus a ninety minute nap is they I'm, determined this in, in, in some way, shape, that's or form. The whole that's, that's I think nine I, hours. We need that. We, we think, need to understand what's happening when we sleep. When we're when we're sleeping, we're rejuvenating, we're healing ourselves. Mm-hmm. I honestly believe we can live hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. Like a vampire. Nobody takes care of ourselves the, the way we could. Nobody operates at their full potential. I've yet to meet one person who operates at their full potential. Well, and that's sleeping, that hydrating properly, I, nutrients, I challenging ourselves, being creative, socializing, uh, use, uh, being in control of our sexual energy, mm-hmm. approaching the world in the, in the most intelligent manner. Nobody does it. 
What are you going to say, Steph? I wish I could do that. I mm-hmm. wish I could be on that. But I was going to say that I sleep about seven and a half hours. That's great. That's For a lot sure. to most people. And sometimes, you get a 90 minute nap. sometimes I smoke so much weed in the middle of the day <laughs> that I just mm-hmm. fall asleep, and I think I hit that 90 minute nap. Too. <laughs> <laughs> what you well, got? you're not fully you balanced, and you're not you're not fully balanced, so it's not. I know you actually need even even more. Me up. The weed is messing me up. It's it it doesn't you you don't properly cycle through your sleep schedule when when you when you smoke weed, such it just like any other drug. L'Oreal. And yeah, my sleep. GG. Oh, fuck that. I just started so smoking wait, wait, again. What too. is it doing to my sleep schedule, the, the weed? It's not allowing <laughs> you weed. to sleep as productively and efficiently as you can be. You're not falling into REM sleep as quickly as you could. You're not staying there as long as you could. Oh, because yeah. you're high. Yes. So how could I get there? I'm going to give you this sleep monitor thing that I had that Don't Dr. Oz gave me so you could try it. Because oh, yeah? it monitors your sleep. I yes, highly, I would love I, that. I sleep a lot. I, I could do that. I give it to There's you. lots of things I recommend. One of the biggest things I recommend with sleeping is some type of white noise machine. I prefer brown noise. It's a lower, it's a lower sounding. It drowns out it was noise, evil. especially here in New York when you got all that shit going on in the street. There, everybody here in New York should should have one of these machines that drowns out these noises. Just because you're unconscious for seven or eight hours doesn't mean you had seven eight hours of productive sleep. You got someone next to you moving around. You're hearing shit Hopefully. in the distance. Once again, we sleep in the, in these four cycles. We go to REM sleep. If we're halfway through REM sleep and we hear something in the distance or some conscious does when we're sleeping, it can pull you back to stage one and not wake you up all the way. You don't realize that that messed up your whole sleep cycle and you're, you're so back. That's why you shouldn't sleep with the TV on. And I don't sleep with the TV I don't on. Sleep if I, it's a consistent, TV's tricky. If it's a consistent noise, it could be beneficial. But no, the, the sleep, sleep machine is, I, is so I much can't, better. I, I can't sleep with the TV on. I like I it. it. I, I, find, I can't sleep with the TV on either. But you, you, you'll, I like, you'll, like a, you'll like a noise machine. I have to get machine. up and turn there's, it off. There's an app that I, I use. It's called White Noise. And it, it has a, a, a... The ocean. Like, yeah, it has ocean stuff. and all that. Ocean's I not... Like I, don't, I don't recommend anything that's not consistent, like a crashing wave. It's not consistent. Yeah. So I think that disturbs your lightning storm with the lightning going off. But if it's consistent rain or a Crickets waterfall... And all that kind I of can't stuff. sleep without the sound of the AC, like, from the central Brown air. noise like, sounds like that. It sounds like a fan. I, I sleep with a fan on, too, especially... No, I noticed last Last night it was kind of cold and I was trying oh, to sleep. I, I couldn't cold. sleep without the. I'm um, sleeping. I had to turn the AC on. Still, I still had to turn the it's, AC it's on because I can't sleep. sleep cold, it. Like 65, That's crazy. It, it, lowers, it, lowers, it lowers your heart rate and everything else. No, I have to sleep. In the, my, like it has to be freezing. You know, yeah. my house. I walk in Stephanie's house in the morning like my and be on Alaska. Yeah, she comes to my house and then I'll be like, "Come in," and it's freezing. Like, What's wrong? Alaska <laughs> in here. I was like, "Give me a blanket. It's cool." No, because I can't sleep. I like to sleep with. Oh my god. And I like to sweat under. It's so hard freezing. to date somebody if you like have like different like, temperatures. I think so too. I love too. Like it's, it's, it's comfortable. It's security with yes. that too. Because I, I used to date this guy that was always hot, and he was like, "Oh, that it would be mad cold, but I'm always cold." That's how the oh same no, thing you guys were yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. it was not working you, for me. It was snowing outside. This motherfucker had the window wide open. That's me. I woke That's up. Me. I said, oh, "I was yeah. I can't do it." Best way to sleep. I think it was. I like ten blankets on top of me, but. Yeah. I think it's because he was yeah, super hairy and like, then it was like, he's, going body. He's, this he's like sweating. Even yeah. hairy. Like, I don't know what he was on, but like, it had to be below fucking 10 in that I shit. can't sleep. I'm I couldn't like, do nah, it. I too. stopped I'm fucking like that. with him because of that shit. I'm dead. No, sleep. and I get up to use I the bathroom sleep. and I swear it's so cold. My bones are hurting. But then I run back to the bed. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> I, got a timer, I got a timer on my shit now. So I, I, I shut it off two hours before I wake up and then usually it works. How about I don't dream at all? Oh, that's smart. I don't know if I don't dream or I don't remember Everybody them. Dreams. You don't, you don't remember. I don't remember them. my dreams ever. I'll be I remember my dreams. I mean, work on that. I don't know how. And it's, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> the um, one, one of my kicks in my book is control your dreams because it's mm-hmm. it's about controlling your your subconscious as well. Um, the best way to remember your dreams is we usually forget them not immediately upon waking, but shortly after. Mm-hmm. So it's good to have a dream journal next to your bed. I usually you'll remember something. It's, it's, it's even if you have alarm wake you off. Um, a good percentage of the time it's going to wake you up when you're, when you're in the dream state and then immediately write it down. And the more you write the dreams down, the, the better you will be with remembering them. But, uh, lucid dreaming is something that I'm dabbling with as well. And this is some really interesting stuff. Uh, a homie of mine introduced me to this a little bit. He told me, and, and I believe him, he told me that he lucid dreams. He can put himself in one of three different places. One of them was a grotto with 15 women. One of them was on top Damn. of a mountain in Tibet. <clears throat> 
I forgot what the you third said, on top one of a was. Nun? Mount, uh, on top mountain. of a mountain. Oh, I thought yeah. you said a nun. Nine. And, I was uh, like, he's, he's, very, he's a very freak. spiritual person, and he like <laughs> meditates in his dream, like his, and he can pick these three places as well. And there's there's tricks that you can do when when you're throughout the day to um, to help you lucid dream. Lucid dreaming is just being uh, aware that you are in, you are dreaming. And one of the things is look at a clock and, and just stare at it for a, a few extra seconds, a digital clock, because mm-hmm. supposedly this hasn't happened. I've read about this a few different times. When you see a clock in a dream, it's never the right time. It's like 7342 o'clock hmm. in a dream. And the other thing I've is just doing reality dream. checks I, I, is what I, what I call them. Just look at your hand. And, and this is what I, this is what I do a lot. Just look at your hand and count your five fingers. And if you do, the more you do that. The more, the bigger a chance you're creating to look at your hand in a dream because it's going to become a habit. But when you look at your hand in a dream, there's never five fingers, and sometimes it's a fucking flipper, and and sometimes there's some what? weird shit going on, and and you'll know you're dreaming. Dreams are some crazy stuff. Once you start researching, getting into them, dreams, we go to another dimension, we go to another reality, we 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 go to this place that we we can't fathom, put words to, or describe. Our brain interprets it as these visual images when we wake up, and they never make sense because we don't understand understand this place that we go to. But when you start, I haven't yet been in a dream and said, I'm dreaming, but I have been able to start controlling them. I started predicting what happens yeah, in my dreams, too. which is you a do? form of that, yeah. which hell? is really cool. I had one dream where I was, I was driving with my old step, my stepbrother that I haven't seen in so long. We were looking at houses and for some reason we decided to drive the car off a, a cliff and I predicted exactly how the car would flip off the cliff. Like it would go two times and land upside down. So you predicted, then, well, you predicted, predicted it in your dream. Ha- yeah, in my dream. I remember doing this. I'm getting to the really cool thing, though, in a second. The other one was we drove off a bridge into water, and I predicted it would go off and roll. It was exactly how, how I did it. But the, the, the dopest dream I've ever had and I've ever heard anybody ever having, I, used to, I, I have dreams of me flying all the time. Yeah. But I usually have to get a running start and then glide and go and really concentrate hard or jump off of something and glide and go. I jump off of stuff this, too. It's so crazy. It's flying is so much fun. And sometimes I can jump high, I can levitate stuff. But in this one dream, I remember standing there and I understood this energy we have yet to discover. It was like magnetic or it was like electricity, but it, it was something we haven't discovered yet. And, and I understood it. It wasn't, I just didn't just, I understood it. I made it work. And then I was able to absorb it, like pull it from the, the sky and absorb it. That's and then crazy. Pff, take off and fucking like fly. Like Ooh, yeah. that's cool. Right? That's cool. Yes, that was right? fucking cool. Do your reality checks, man. If you can control your dreams and do crazy stuff like that. And when I'm dreaming, all the, I hate it when this happens. Like usually when I'm having a bad dream, I'm like in the dream, like relax, you're dreaming. Like, you know. <laughs> Do that. Too. Calm down. It's just a dream. It's just a dream. Freddy Krueger is not gonna kill you. I, I haven't done that. You You've can, never you can done maintain, that. No, you can maintain. No, that's you can maintain why control. I mentioned it because I heard you say that you didn't. You've never done that. I do that. Like I'll have a dream I'm that like, I'm like killing my boyfriend. Or I've I'm, had some nasty I'm, ones. I'm, I've never I'm, been there. Say no, telling myself it's a dream. That's no. That's I've, good. I've had some really nasty dreams. I've had dreams where I'm getting raped or something crazy because my head is damn yeah no. so but i'm telling you in these dreams i'm like wake up like what's wrong i'm like scolding I myself always tell like, like, myself wait, wait, wake up, up. always say tell you i'm in control this is my dream i'm creating this reality Babe, tell yourself that's what that i control. do that's exactly what i tell myself like this is your life wake up you in bed it's, that's the hardest you want to you want to you want to play with me i bet you if you pee Bitch, right get now, up I bet you if you pee right now, you're going to pee in the bed. But that's that's the like, I tell myself shit like that while I'm dreaming. <laughs> Gigi, what's your dream? I dreams? swear. I swear. I'm I've like had kid. that pee in the bed dream before. The pee and one. And I really the pee in the bed. I've had the pee. I've stopped it. I think, I've, I think I've been in a dream I've, and I thought if I pee now, I'm pissing my bed. I yeah. Think, I think yeah. I've thought no, I've that done before. that. So what yourself in your dream? Yeah, I've had the pee in the bed dream where I pee in the bed. And I've had the pee in the bed dream where I got up. And went and peed. Oh, I definitely. And then I've had the pee in the bed pee dream the where bed. I just held it. Like I knew I was asleep, and I'm like, you don't. Like, pee. I'm too tired to get yeah, up right now. Pee, I think but I'm I not gonna pee in the bed. Yeah. I never want to get up. Right. I hope. No, no I've definitely, I've definitely peed no, in the bed. No, but when I'm having a bad really? dream, like to test really myself, like, oh, you think this Probably. is real? Yeah. And I tell myself when I'm having a bad dream, oh, you think this is real? You think this is real? Pee on yourself. Go ahead, pee. It's gonna be in your bed. Go ahead, try. Yeah, you like punish yourself. I swear, I scold myself. Don't tell any doctor that. They'll give you fucking meds. I swear, I wake up. I think it's amazing and brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, but I wake up and I, I, I'm like, wow, I was really just like, 
really spazzing out in my dream right now. The only dream I used to have was <laughs> that my like, teeth oh. were falling out. Like I would grind. Oh, I have something. that a lot. That's yeah, I used to have that. Teeth. I used to have that dream, and I would have the dream that I was falling, and then I would wake up when I hit the ground. Me too. I, I, I have a bit that. about I, dreaming too. I have a comedy bit had about it. I, I had this one dream where I. Uh, I woke up, I got up, shut off the alarm, went to, went to my bathroom, started up the shower, uh, peed, went back in, showered, scrubbed myself, washed my hair, got out, dried off, put my clothes on, put deodorant on, brushed my teeth, did everything I do in the morning, went and, and uh, made a protein shake, played with my dogs a little bit, walked out the door and fucking woke up again. <laughs> oh, for real. Okay. For real. Like, wow. and, no, and, I, and I had to do God. it all over again. I'm like, what the fuck? Like around all this day. is my subconscious fuck with me on another level. You know what I had? And when I, I dreamed also... that I got up and got ready for work and I'm still in bed. <laughs> uh, you've done that? Oh my God. What? Yeah, I will do that's that. What just, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, exactly yeah. Exactly what I do. Uh, another, another fucked up one I had. <laughs> I, I have. Uh I had dreams. I actually had a, a, a dream where I could breathe underwater, but I had to fight fucking sharks. And not only did I have to fight sharks, for some reason there's tigers that could breathe underwater that I had to fight what? as well. I'm not even kidding. What you can't make mean? this shit up. <laughs> oh my god, I was watching this movie called 47 Meters Deep. Oh my god, with the sharks, it was so crazy. <laughs> now we're all gonna have crazy <laughs> dreams. Okay, now let me. Now we have an Ask Ye question. Somebody sent in this question, so we want to get your advice. Okay, she said, when we first started dating, I found porn on his phone, and I was upset about it, and we argued over it, and he said he didn't know how I felt about it, and he he said he knew how I felt about it, and he, he wouldn't watch it anymore. A couple of months after, I found it again. We argued again. But then, after time to think about it, I told myself, him watching porn is better than him cheating, mm -hmm. and I told him it was okay with it once in a while but recently I found it again and she said we live together we have sex almost every day I do favors for him and give whatever he wants and it really does hurt my feelings that he still feels the need to watch porn when I give him whatever he wants sexually it makes me feel like I'm not enough and I think it's disrespectful what do you think time to move on and accept the fact that he's gonna watch porn how many more times <laughs> you gotta catch him yeah. Yeah, like, bitch, get off my phone. If he's pleasing you, if it's not a problem, you know, with, with you Maybe guys. Maybe he's learning if something. He's, if he's by satisfying you enough. Research. Wait, what kind yeah. of porn is this, though? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She didn't say, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to like make a man her feel fucking totally... a dog, or now that's something that you got to be careful with. I don't think that, I don't think that's not porn. That's bestiality. That's not porn. I found out that he watched porn. I would actually be happy and I would want us to watch it together. Right. I've never watched, have I? No, I never. That too, and yeah, and, and talk to him about that as well, and bring it up that, and tell him that if you don't mind watching it with him, you know, say that. But if if it's you know his thing that he doesn't want to do with you, you respect that as well. This this appreciate him being open and honest, and and you guys talk about it. if it bothers you, let him know. You know, if it doesn't, let him know that too. Offer to watch it with him if he says no. You know, respect that too. Just. To so be open and honest. That's that's the keys to help the relationship. Like said, why is she going through his phone anyway? Why are you in his phone? Like, yeah. Yeah. like, like one, time, phone. one time I was Two. on somebody's yeah. laptop. Like, I was using somebody's laptop. If you don't trust somebody, you don't trust somebody. If you trust them, leave them alone. This guy had, you know how you put the fucking folder up or whatever? And it, make a long story short, this is why I said the dog shit. He had a woman fucking a horse. Oof. He can't compete with that. But I'm just confused. Why the <laughs> fuck is this in a folder? Like, it was like a, a screen. You, what you call it? Like, one of the a icons on the desktop. Thumb, thumb yes. Thumb like, thumb like, thumb it was, thumb like thumb you can see. I was like, what the fuck? Who's this bitch? Like, maybe he knows her. I don't know. That maybe he knows the horse. Weird. Have you ever watched that? <laughs> Have you ever watched the I watched the, 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 I watched the, the man. The girl I didn't, the horse? I didn't horse. watch yeah. it. I just didn't see Dr. Hands. Mr. Hands or something. The donkey show in Mexico? I've seen He died, this guy. I'm sure he did if he's I've fucking seen, dying. Yeah. I would die too. I've seen it. I've like seen it a lot. His spleen or some shit. I've him. seen it a few times. God, <laughs> the dick was like a horn. Well, I, that's the that's, that's, why? That not, if that's not fucking karma, I don't know what is. Right. Don't horse fuck horses. Like <laughs> hey, don't fuck don't horses. Don't horses fuck you. <laughs> you ride them. The not horse like into it. The horse be into it. The horse was. You know how like dogs fuck? Yeah. How they jump up on top of you? That's how the horse was. The horse squirted. What? His dick was like. Ugh. This is disgusting. I don't want to talk about this. That is it. Let's ask Stephanie since she has I've so much. I've seen it. I've seen it too. <laughs> a lot. 
Uh, did you, <laughs> and you watched like the whole thing? Nah, yeah, I've watched the whole thing. That bestiality porn. It's uh, not even to make you. Right. It's not even to make you horny. I think yeah. I've watched it to it's see what happens. Like what's wrong? Yeah. Like there's person? some. Yeah. All right. It's like a there's dream some. Wreck. It should not make you horny. It does not. Oh my god! It does not. It doesn't. I've seen it. It's, I've, I was curious. Now, so, Nick, have you have you ever been in love? I got. I can't talk about this anymore. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> go, go. Have you ever been in love? Yeah, with a horse once. No. <laughs> Thoroughbred. Thoroughbred <laughs> stallion. Um, I I interpret love differently now. I I love everyone. Um, Come on, I Nick. think <laughs> being in love, <laughs> me too. For real. I think being in love, it's it's a, it's a choice. I think uh, most of the time it's not approach an intelligent matter. It's an infatuation. It's something that we think we need, but but we don't. I used to, I used to go from girl to girl to girl. It's been eight years since I had someone I called a girlfriend, but before that, it was, there was a girl, you know, in the picture just about every week or a couple. I, I probably I might have had a two week break on, on some of them for like years and years and years. So I mean I, I did that for a long time and I thought that's that's how that's how our, our weak society is built, saying that there's something wrong with you if you're not with somebody else. And if you're alone, you know, you have problems and we have to have that. So we have to be married and have fucking kids by the time we're twenty two or we're old and it's, it's too late and you're gonna miss your opportunity and it's and it's all bullshit. We need to we need, need to do a lot more self discovery before we we worry about that. And you got to love yourself before you, you love anybody else. It's impossible to love anybody if you don't love yourself. But don't those like 11 hour sleeps get a little lonely by yourself? <laughs> like, yo, know, nine, like nine to 10. I, I, I pull off 12 to 14. <laughs> Hell no. I get amazing sleep. I get amazing sleep. I like to I think, I think people sleep in separate beds anyways. What? What? I told you earlier, nobody, nobody yelled, said anything about it. But man, if someone's, we move around, we snore, we make fucking noises, we get up, go to the bathroom. You're being disturbed the whole I'll night. You're not, wait, getting, you're not getting, you're not getting. I have to disagree. Noise. You're not getting productive no, no, sleep. I have to, you know, I, I feel like when I'm in love, I want to sleep like on. Yeah, no, I be like, like uh, cuddle. And we don't up. snore. Mm-hmm. I, I. I I, do. I know I snore. I wake myself up sometimes. Yeah, you snore. Anybody yeah. who falls asleep on their back. Yeah. Not all the time, but sometimes I, I like snore. Little, no, soft snore. I heard Ange do before. No, but I, when <laughs> I sleep with my baby, I like to sleep all up on. We sleep on each other like all of right. these. That's how I am. So, Nick, you didn't really answer the question. <laughs> like, not that you love everybody, but do you feel like you've been in love? I, uh, when I was younger, I, every girl... I I've, I love you. This is it. I'm I, not I was saying married love. briefly in, as well too. In love. In love. Of in love. Of course I love you. Married. I, love I got married. I got married briefly, as mm-hmm. as well. But yeah, she was. That was when I was in the Air Force. But I went from girl to girl to girl to girl to girl, and I was in love with all of them. What I interpreted what love was and being in love and committing. You're it forever. You and me. I I did that every fucking weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I so, thought that's, I, and I, I wanted it all to work. I wanted every single one of those to work. And I was, I, I wanted that commitment. And, you know, I don't want to be lonely. You yeah. think it was you? It was society putting it in his head. Was, no, I'm was saying, what do you me? think that the reason they didn't work out, you think it was you? Cause you, yeah, it was, I was so way too fucking <laughs> young Definitely and inexperienced. Me. And <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, didn't go through any self discovery at that point. Like mm-hmm. I said, you got to love yourself before you can love so someone else. So what about else. now? Story. Cause you had a lot of self discovery. You've had a hundred kicks in your ass. I am. Being in love with somebody and having you know that romantic fling, I'm open to that. I've had a couple, I've had a couple nice flings in the last eight years with with a girl I had a great time with for a weekend, and and uh, I've stayed friends with just pretty much everybody. I haven't ended a relationship badly in the last eight years, but no, I haven't found that that one that I want to run off with and commit to and plan on being with for a long time. I haven't, I haven't found that in, in a long time. You went to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not? You know what? I, I, was, I think we all do. I think I think you're lying. To, you're, well, not you're not lying to yourself, but you're you're confused if if you think that you're not <laughs> open to that possibility of finding this person. And I hate it when people try to shut that off from their life. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like that. You, you we're, it's it's unlikely you're gonna find this fucking amazing person that you're gonna love and be with every day and enjoy every second with forever. It's it's it's. It's plausible though. It's it's doable, and we should stay stay open to that for sure. I and I hope one, everybody finds them. One episode of Jiggle, one woman said she was hiring an es- a male escort because she had gone through a really bad breakup, and she was like, "I don't ever want to expose myself to hurt again." Fair and, enough, man. 
and, and be in love again. Fair enough. And, uh, you know, they're they're in control and they're, they're not going to, you know, find that heartbreak and everything's straight up. You pay this, you get me for this long and I'm going to be there. I'm going to be on fucking point. You're going to get my attention. We're going to have a good time. There's there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I think this this Hollywood and storybook love stuff is 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 infatuation a lot of the times and and it can be unhealthy i don't th- i think it's really approached in an intelligent manner and i think what my service provides is a very inte- intelligent way of approaching and having a relationship you ever come too quick if i go a, a, a while and i, I have a, i have really good control now mm-hmm. and a lot of that's mental but if if i go a while without coming i i, I can come quick I, I can make myself come very quickly if, if, if I want wanted to. to. I, I have a lot of control now. What makes you come quick? Though. Like, cause a lot of women want to know this, right? What would make you, like, what, what takes you over the edge? Is it more mental? Is it more like a woman talking or is it more physical? Sure the fuck ain't a woman talking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, wow. talking during sex. I'm just sex. kidding. No, the, the, the build up, the, the, uh, the, the the whole build up, the whole fling, the intense the anticipation, you know, the, the talking is is a part of it, and and connecting and, and having this special moment, and 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 all of that is is involved in that because it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds, and then when you do it at the the right moment, so so timing is a big part of that as well. So it's everything that you know, every, everything that it leads up to that moment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not something crazy that she's going to do or a costume that she's going to wear or something. It's, it's the appropriate build up to the appropriate time. So what's the most times you came in one session? I used to try to come many times and, and fast and hard. It's, it's a little different. It's a little different now when, when, when I sleep with somebody, I, I, I write it out a little longer and we will, we, we'll even, you know, take a break before I come. Okay. And so it's, it's a lot, it's a lot different now. But when I, when I was younger, a, a lot, I used to shoot a lot too. I, I donated sperm for uh, about a year when I was living in LA as well. Oh, so you got some kids out there somewhere. Yeah, I do. And actually, wow. I was going to look back into that because I told them I didn't want them to contact me, but I think I changed my mind on can that. Can you change your mind? Oh my God. You can. You can. Damn, and then it's up to them when they turn 18, they they may contact you. Wow. That's crazy. I think I'd be open. To that. That'd be that'd be cool. I'd be, when I was younger, I'm like, no, nah, I, I don't know. Want that. It could be millions. Yeah, <laughs> that, that movie. Remember that? Movie? I was in the top one percent. There, there could be a lot of me running around. Who knows? Oh, oh, the young hawks. <laughs> right. <laughs> have, have any of your clients ever started to stalk you? No, no, no stalking. Or like, I mean, did you feel like it was I, like getting crazy, like clingy? There's or? some that I guess maybe spend a, a little too much time. I, May approach the relationship and become a little too infatuated with with what I do, but no no stalking. Most few of my clients live in Vegas, and I mean I'm I'm barred up in a gated community too. So All right. I don't think I'm anybody ever, ever anybody try anybody to see you and not have to pay after like oh let's just go out like not as a client situation, but yeah yeah some of them they they don't feel like they're totally comfortable with that or maybe that for some reason that they shouldn't be paying for the service, even though, you know, it's, it's upfront and clear. And I know some of them have gotten me in in hopes that, you know, maybe something will develop and they don't have to pay anymore. But Mm -hmm. for the most part, you know, everybody's happy with the, the, the arrangement and situation. They know exactly what they're getting and what to expect. And there's no heartbreak. I don't, I never let anybody down. You, you book me. I'm there from that time to that time. And I'm, I'm on point. You what know, if a bunch like of girls said, came? Like, what if it was, you know, four girls and they were like, we want to run a train on you? <laughs> and one of them I, I wouldn't let Angela. one girl run a train on me, <laughs> for starters. Isn't that running a train if it's a bunch of women and one man? If, the, if they're running a train on me, that means like they have like uh, dildos or something. No, or I don't mean like that. That's, 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 I mean like no, multiple I'm, I'm, I'm women. Playing, <laughs> Um, Has that it ever- depends on the situation, depends on my mood, you know, that's something I usually don't walk into. Um, <laughs> Juju. usually when girls get me, sometimes, sometimes they'll have me meet their girlfriends and shit too, and say, hi, they've, they've sometimes watched the show too. And, you know, we talk and have a drink, but usually when girls get me, they, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a special thing. They want to keep it to them themselves for the most part. But I mean, I would be open to it. It would de- depend on. You know, the girls and, and the energy and, you know, if everything was cool and it was good energy and we all got along and would clicked, you, you know, I, I'd, I'd be into they're that. Very, they're they're discount. Count. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gigi's birthday. It's, 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 it's just my time, so. 
<laughs> what about men? Do men try to reach out to you or try to see if they could book? I'm a, sure a they bit, do. A, a, a little bit. The, the agency is very clear that it's it's straight oh, escorts okay. for straight women. Okay. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I've I've had some very big propositions. Have you but, ever been like shit? It's a lot I mean, of money, man. maybe. Yeah. Like. I've, I've thought about a couple of them, but even though I like, I don't care, and I could live with myself after. I'm like, I've gone this long, right? You right. know, and and I'm I'm doing all right. You know, I, I could retire right now if I wanted to. You know, oh, like cool. back back if I had this mentality back then, I don't know. And well, usually the proposition is for them to suck, just suck me off and right. pay me ten yes, grand or thirty right. grand or or what, right. whatever it is. And and that happened to me back then, and I, I always said no to that. But I even talked to my straight friends, my like my broke straight friends. They're like, T- I would do that shit. I'm like, I what? I, yeah. Like all of them you said that. Thousand dollars. Close your eyes, pretend it's, it's a girl. I'm like, no. There's there's a little more <laughs> involved in that, you know. And that like, might be like the that's best. something you're gonna think about every day for a long that might be the best time. Dick suck right? of your life. <laughs> right, and that's the problem too. Because what if it's what really if it's good and so you're like, good. oh shit, yeah. fuck, I liked it. Yeah, I love Any it. type of sexual encounter like that too, you know. I don't ever just get my dick sucked by some random girl. I, I still need to have like that's that's sensual and that's you know I, I need some type of you know connection you know even even to to do that. What if that's what she wanted though? What if she was like, I just want to suck your dick. Nothing. Don't speak to me. Just pull. Don't ask me out. anything. Yeah. Pull that could be kind of Probably hot. go down. It'd probably go down. Yeah. Yeah. Probably go down. <laughs> you know, unless. She was drunk or on drugs or unstable or, mm-hmm. you know, this had this horrible energy. Oh, we're all unstable. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now, what if a guy said $100,000? I just want to suck your dick. No. A million. A, a million, million dollars? dollars million dick. Don't play. <laughs> Two million. Two. Okay, two million. <laughs> Double it up. If anybody out there got two million dollars <laughs> from Dubai, maybe. But I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't even do that though. Like I, I would never put. My, I've never sold anything for sex, and I, I couldn't do that anyways. If, if somebody, I would never say no to that because it could be. At this point in my career, I, I, I have too much to, to risk. If I was Listen, broke, I my dick for two million. If I was right. broke, maybe. But like, I got too much to risk anyways. You know, it, it could be my dick for two million. It could be a sting or something. It could be a sting or you know. A Right, you're right. Or it something could be. Like that. Anyways, you know, so it, it's it's not going to happen. Mm. Sorry, guys. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. guys listening. <laughs> so, are we getting are we getting another season of Gigolo? <laughs> it's looking that way. It's been a couple years since we shot six, but mm-hmm. six was our our biggest season and most popular, and it, it blew away the other seasons. So and why they, two they years? love the show. They make a lot of money off it. They rerun the shit out of it. We have mm-hmm. six of them in the bank, and it's airing in Russia. It's it's airing all over the world. Wow, congratulations. Right now, too. Well, I don't see any of that shit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is cool. It, it is cool, you know, getting feedback and having, you know, fans and shit in Russia and all. It's like, it's in like every country. I've gotten feedback from, from everybody. I got feedback recently from this Asian student who's studying English. And he said he watches the show because I speak so quickly and it helps him with his English. And you <laughs> believe that? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I like your pretty little mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I watch the show. Two hundred pound man in Illinois. <laughs> How much did your rate go up after you did the show? It, it went up. It went up. Uh, Garen wants to put it up even more. I'm happy where it's at right now, though. Put it up more. Because <laughs> I, I don't fulfill all my requests, and it's a supply demand thing. But mm-hmm. I'm I'm happy where it's where where it's at. That's kind of a cool living to make for yourself as a man. And it really is providing a service when you watch it, like, and you see, you know, the things that some of these women go through, and the reason why they hire. And Esker, a lot of them is their first time doing it. What me to do this book and everything, too. You know, I want to bring as much to the table as possible. Not everybody, you know, comes to me to to get confidence and help with depression and shit like that. But, you know, even somebody who is in outstanding health and is happy most of the time, you know, I still want to, I still want, when, when I want this booking to be, to have some fucking substance and the night that they're going to remember, I want to tell them shit that they, that can apply, that they haven't heard before that they can mm-hmm. apply to their life. That's what every kick is in here. It's, it's an intelligent motivation that kicks you in the ass and shit that you, you, you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And I, I always want to leave this, 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 I want to have this 
earth shattering, tilting, life changing. I go, this, this night to just be everything I can bring to the table. And I think the more information I absorb, the, the better I'm able to do that and, and communicate this advice and, and then be entertaining and witty and everything else on top of that and throw down. Well, we appreciate you for coming through. 100 kicks Thanks for having ass. me back again. Mm-hmm. Nick Hawk is here with us. But make sure y'all check out Jigolo. We're looking for season seven. Yeah, hopefully we'll be shooting here this and, next spring. And looking I'm sure there's some stuff you'll do on your own because he also DJs, he raps, he does jujitsu. You do everything. Yeah, yeah. Just and he was in the Air Force. In jiu-jitsu. I'm performing. Wow. You're yeah. talented. You man of many trades. <laughs> doing, doing a lot of stuff. I used to be a jack of all trades, but I like to think I'm putting them all together now. They all they all help each other out. Well, we love but the music jack, is big. I just did a cover to I just did a cover to Wrecking Ball that's that's releasing on the 